Hi and welcome back to Joe's DIY. I'm back again with another video. This time we're going to be re repairing this uh, Sony cassette uh, tape player. And uh, the only problem that it has is that we have uh, bad belts. Uh, I've actually looked into this already and the belts are not in the best shape. As a matter of fact, they're actually disintegrated. And I'm going to go ahead and change them uh, because it is a relatively simple mechanism to, to troubleshoot and fix. Uh, as far as the belts are concerned. And I am going to use uh, a bag of assorted belts. I got several bags, different sizes here. And uh, I've found many uses for these, even though, you know, I really buy them for certain lengths. Um, I am able to save these. And if I were to come across something like this, uh, that costs roughly around uh, $14.99 at a Goodwill, I can easily pick it up and fix it uh, with these belts on me. Um, I also got this bag here that I can look through and sort through to see if I can find the right size. Uh, there's been certain cha certain channels have mentioned that uh, you should really you really should stay away from these because they're not going to be the exact size. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm I'm also going to have uh, we're also going to test the the sound the audio off of this uh, and hopefully if I can find the proper software I can go ahead and test this uh, for wild and flower to see if it stays within the uh, the appropriate settings uh, or the appropriate settings for the design of this machine. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the Sony cassette deck. And uh, just taking a closer look, that's the model number right there. That's the TCFX170. Uh, it's a single uh, deck uh, stereo cassette player. And uh, Probably from the 90s, I would assume. Just checking the back here. Okay, I don't have a date here, but there is a serial number there. Okay, this is made in Malaysia, so probably not from the 80s, but I can't really make that assumption. Um, you know, typical uh, AV in, AV out. Most cassette players have. Uh, I've actually already um, unscrewed this. I'm going to get that open really quick. And you'll be surprised by what's inside. Um, very limited electronics from what I can see. Not not that much at all going on in here. There's the, the board that controls, uh, you know, the interface. And, you know, you got the motor here. And this is... Uh, a power supply right here, very small power supply. So not not much going on in here. I'm surprised, you know, you probably don't even need all this room here. You could probably make this very thin and it would still function well enough. Um, uh, this is not really a high-end uh, tape player, but uh, I think it would be a good one because you don't have the auto-reverse mechanism and you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, the uh, tape head moving and getting misaligned. So that would be an advantage of these things. Okay, so as you can see, we already can see the ever present problem. We got loose belts right there. I think this is the one for the counter. And then we have already, I can kind of feel, I don't know if we can look right there. So we, oh yeah, there it is, look. That's the goo that these belts uh, basically become after years of uh, being in here and I got another loose belt right here if you can see right here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carefully try to remove this residue uh, of the disintegrated belt and then try to clean it out and then uh, we'll see what we're looking at right here so what I have here are basically some angled tweezers that I'm gonna use to pull it out uh, the goal here is to try to get them out well, then having a falling apart on you, uh, it is possible. Um, so I'm going to try my best to do it. And if I do screw it up, I'll just have to get uh, basically some uh, ear swabs and try to uh, clean this out with some alcohol. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a try and see how well I do. Okay, it's needless to say that uh, this thing was a huge pain in the butt. However, um, lucky for me, I was able to free this uh, right out of the machine. I didn't expect that. I thought it'd be like stuck in there, uh, 
and not being able to get it out without tearing everything apart. But luckily for me, this is a Sony uh, tape deck, uh, which would usually implies that this is kind of easy to uh, work with, and it has been. Uh, I was able to get uh, the belt residue out of here. It took me several cotton swabs and eventually a couple of cotton balls with alcohol for me to completely get this completely clean. Uh, so now I'm gonna go ahead and move, go over to the next roller over here. Okay, looks like we got most of that cleaned up. Um, very hard to work on this one right here because this capstan or wheel, whatever you wanna call it. Um, very difficult to get in there and clean everything as best as I could, but I got most of it out. So uh, I think we're in good position to start looking for a belt here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start looking for belts uh, from the manual and I will put a picture up right here. But from the manual, uh, I can see that there's two belts, one going here, one going there, um, that keep the whole thing moving. So I'm gonna work on that, trying to find two belts. Um, we're gonna have to do a little bit of uh, uh, rounding or estimation to kind of see uh, how wide the belt that goes here will be. Obviously it can't be too tight and it can't be too loose. So it's gonna be something in the middle. Okay, so um, I was able to find a belt. I, I had to remove those belts because uh, they were just too tight. So I did find belts that were just a little bit wider. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try these on and see if that works a little bit better. So I'll go ahead and give that a try. Uh, I went ahead and had to completely remove the tape deck, clean this up, and then put the, the correct belt on there and hopefully we get some movement here. It also gives me a little bit of time to kind of spray this with some air, clean it out. So uh, be right back with that. Okay, so I was able to get that motor back on and it looks like the belt's moving. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean this out with a little bit of air and without making too much of a mess. Okay, and I'll also take advantage of the fact that I have it out and I'll go ahead and clean out the erase head magnet or whatever it is and uh, hopefully get this thing started. Okay, so probably the for the first time in a long time, this thing's actually running. Uh, you can, I don't know if you can, the camera catches there. We do have movement on those pinch rollers and cap scans. So, um, and I'm definitely hearing sound there. So uh, we're gonna hook this up and kind of just listen to it and see how well it's uh, making sound. Okay, so I guess we're ready to test this out. Um, if you've seen any of my other uh, demo videos for turntables, uh, I have this speaker set up. It's basically like karaoke, karaoke speaker, but the nice thing about this is that it has a treble and bass control, uh, which I really like on, on that speaker. And I also have my, uh, my mixer here. Uh, it's an old Radio Shack mixer, but it works well. It's got the uh, VU meters right there. And we have the tape deck uh, connected to the mix mixing board into the speaker. So we should hear that in that order. Uh, I went ahead and leveled off uh, all the bass, treble, uh, everything, all, as well as on, on the speaker here, but just so we can uh, get a pretty accurate uh, sound of what we're getting. And then here I have a, a tape uh, from the actual uh, YouTube library of uh, music. Uh, so I have that record on this tape so that we can listen to it. Uh, this tape is just a JVC uh, IEC type one tape. So uh, it's supposed to die for dynamic performance. So, okay, so I got that in. Uh, as you can see, it's marked uh, normal here. Let me see if I can get that into the, it's marked normal and it's also marked I also have the Dolby uh, B pushed in because that's the way I recorded this. Okay, so uh, here comes nothing. So let's go ahead and uh, play this. So the first thing that comes to mind is that this sounds perfectly fine. Uh, I don't see uh, any problems with the speed. I think this is playing at the right speed. Uh, the sound is a little loud just because it is from the YouTube library. So that music's a, 
you know, a little bit loud, but uh, nonetheless, I mean, it sounds great. And uh, Okay, so like I said before, I mean, you have to be your own judge as far as the quality of uh, the tape playing is. Um, and also, you know, whether or not you hear speed problems or whether or not you hear wow and flutter. Uh, but I want to do I want I do want to take it a step further. And I did get a chance to buy uh, this cassette tape. Uh, it's a Vision Quest uh, Works. I think that's the name of the company that makes these. Uh, but this is a speed calibration cassette. So um, it's supposed to play that uh, uh, three kilohertz tone um, and it's gonna go through uh, the computer and we're gonna be able to kind of investigate and see if the wow and flutter is affected by this. So uh, that would be the next step. So, but as far as I'm concerned, I mean, just with my naked ear, so to speak, I don't really hear any problems with the speed of this machine uh, as far as it uh, playing tapes. All right, so here I have the guide or the manual for uh, this particular uh, tape deck, as you can see right there. And uh, I want to take, want to walk you through a couple of things. So here is where we mentioned the wow and flutter, as you can see there. Let me go ahead and zoom it in just a little bit more so you can see that. Okay. So we're going to be uh, measuring uh, this one right here, the the point sixteen percent. Uh, that would be uh, just a, a wow peak. And what I've used is actually a program uh, from this website, it's called ANT Audio. And uh, this is a WFGUI program made by Alex Freed. I'm, I don't know who that is, uh, but this is supposed to measure uh, wow and flutter. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and press uh, play here. Well, actually, let me go ahead and talk a little bit about the settings. So. Um, I my tape is actually uh, 3,000 uh, hertz, uh, as you can see right here. Let me pull up the tape. So this is a, a, a 3,000 hertz uh, tone tape. So I'm gonna switch that over to 300 3,000 hertz, and I'm gonna go ahead and switch this over to uh, Wow, because that's what we're gonna be measuring. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this at about. Yeah, let me put it at uh, uh, 0.4%. That would be the range uh, so that we can actually see the peak. Um, going back to uh, what it says here, I should have a wow of 0.16%. Okay, so that would be the ideal, the perfect uh, for this machine. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the test again, and let's go ahead and Go ahead and just save the log and I will press play now and I should start the test. Okay, so um, as you can see, uh, the wow is sort of there. I mean, it's kind of wiggling around between 15 and 16. Uh, but as you can see, I mean, the WoW is doing okay um, as far as this test is concerned. Uh, I can play, leave it playing a little longer. Um, 
but there it is. Uh, it is teetering a little bit back and forth now, going a little higher. Okay. So it's not super consistent, but it is around the range that we want. Okay. So that seems to be decent. I mean, it's not perfect, but uh, it really just depends if you can hear it. Uh, when I was playing the audio, uh, obviously on my uh, cassette deck, I, I could not hear a difference in speed. So this is uh, working out okay. Just jump over to uh, the speed now because I do have a speed test for this. And let me just scroll down a little bit. <clears throat> okay, so here's the specification for the speed, right? That is the range of frequency. You got uh, 2,990 and 3,010 hertz. So that would be uh, the uh, correct digital frequency for for this machine. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull up another test. And again, this could be found in the in this website, the ANT Audio. And this is. Uh, I'm going to be using this musical tuner, but it does also have an oscilloscope, which allows us to uh, measure the frequencies, as you can see right there. Frequency is right where it should be. It's maybe perhaps a little slower than it should be, uh, but it's still close to that range, that digital frequency counter range. So again, if, I mean, if you could hear a difference in speed, obviously uh, this would be the numbers. There would be a bigger discrepancy here, but. The discrepancy, I think, is very mild. Uh, it's, it's it's a little slower than it should be, but uh, I, I still can't really hear a difference when I play tapes. So it would totally be, a, you know, up to the person's uh, preference. Uh, but I could live with these numbers as far as the quality of playback on this tape deck. At the end of the day, I think you're you're better suited buying something like this uh, than having it ordered. Um, you know, you think sometimes you're going to get exactly what you ordered uh, for the particular machine, but sometimes it doesn't happen that way. I've had situations where I repaired, you know, Technics uh, cassette decks, and they send me uh, round belts instead of flat belts. And that caused a problem because uh, round belts tend to give up more tension than flat belts. So uh, within a year, you know, the thing split in half. And uh, it was all a waste of money. I ended up spending about 20 bucks. Uh, for uh, you know, I think a pair, two pairs of uh, belts for the two uh, decks that came in in the in the cassette player. Uh, so I I just don't like the idea of not being able to see and feel and touch what I'm gonna pay for. Whereas this option, you know, you could definitely look through and see what fits best on the cassette deck. Um, the belts don't have to be that tight. You know, they're gonna be a little. Bit, there's gonna be a little bit of slack there. Uh, and as uh, you can see through the test that I gave this machine, um, I think the difference in the correct, um, you know, settings is neg negligible. Uh, we weren't that far off, and I just found that finding the right fit for this uh, works better. Um, there have been situations in the past where I found decks where I didn't have the correct size. So in that case, I guess I would spend the extra money if you wanted to. Uh, but that's just not an option for me. Uh, I much prefer to be able to, uh, generally speaking, see and touch and, and feel how wide uh, or how well fitting uh, the belts will be for your particular cassette deck. Uh, another thing that you might want to consider is that if you, sometimes you don't have the belts sold in the United States, so you'll have to order them uh, for either from China or from somewhere in Europe, uh, which can cause more problems because if they send you the wrong uh, size belt, uh, it's going to take even more time to get a return going and then, you know, figuring out if they're going to give you the right size. I mean, it's just a, it's a hassle. Uh, so again, you know, the best option is here based on what I found here today. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, really appreciate uh, all my new subscribers and the support uh, that you're showing me through your comments. I want to wish you the best. Have a wonderful rest of your week and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.